Hey everybody, Brett from Astartes Gaming here, back with another episode of our Jurassic Rim World Let's Play. So at the end of the last episode, we had a raid come onto the map from the Bandit Criminals, our oldest rivals. And there's quite a lot of people here, so I figured we'd maybe try something a little bit unconventional uh, in warding them off. Now, this is a siege, so we do need to be aggressive to some degree, because otherwise they will just set up and mortar us to death. So... Uh, we will have to at least bait them into an assault if we want to be on the defensive. And I figure uh, one good way to do that is to hit them with some sort of massive attack. Um, I have a couple of different things that we've collected over the course of this playthrough in here somewhere. Uh, I know that Dr. Ayala has our orbital power beam targeter. I'd prefer to save that though because that is a massive, massive attack. Probably not necessary for just a group of individuals. Better used on like an enemy city, for example. And we had an Odin device somewhere around here too. Ah, uh, it's so hard to find stuff in this warehouse. I need to eventually set up a secondary storage for things that I might eventually need to use. Uh, as in, like, me personally. As far as raw resources go, this is fine because, you know, the pawns can come and collect from here. I don't need to really be able to find stuff. They can find it. But, uh, when it comes to things I need to micromanage, like these, <clears throat> it'd be nice to be able to actually, you know, find stuff easily. So I have this Odin orbital device, and it looks like a second one, even. However, uh, I think that might be, again, too much. So, I had, and again, its location is escaping me. That's probably overkill as well. We've collected a lot of these, uh, like, doomsday weapons over this playthrough. Um, it looked like a, like a laser designator. But anyways, it is a, effectively an airstrike that we can call in. The issue is I need to find it, <laughs> but as soon as we can find it, we'll go ahead and have, uh, oh, Edward grab it, and he will call in an airstrike on them as soon as they set up in a fixed position. God, where is this thing? I know it's here because I found it before the episode started to make sure it was you know, still in our inventory, but <laughs> apparently it moved. It obviously didn't. I just can't seem to spot it. I'm sure you guys have and are yelling at the screen, but... I'm on the clock here, so it's a little bit harder. I can't pause, for example. So, um, well, I guess I'll do the next best thing, and I'll look around while I cut and come back when I find it. Okay, I finally found it. It's hiding right here. Spectre Air Bombardment. So, Edward, I need you to stop what you're doing and come collect this. He'll put it into his inventory as a sort of sidearm, and in the meantime... We're just going to let everybody do their thing. I'm not going to worry about this too much until they set up into a position. Because they're not going to be aggressive until then. I've already called the animals away. Uh, I've actually set up a zone here for them to just sit and graze. Because uh, every time I bring them into the hotel, they just eat everything. And uh, it becomes a real problem. So they can still eat because they're outside grazing. But this way they don't eat all of my food. Okay, so he's got it. He needs to be relatively close to use it, so that's probably the biggest concern. And obviously we need to get them somewhere where they're not going to be able to run away. Or inadvertently move out of the way. So I'm not going to use it until they are actually settled in and calling down their uh, supplies and whatnot. Unfortunately, this is going to destroy most of those supplies, but we've collected so many of these, I want to start using at least some of them. So we can see what they do. And also they're effective weapons. So yes, there's going to be some collateral damage. But it's not going to be anything against us. Um, yeah, sorry, not a great time, guys. Come back later. But yeah, there's going to be some collateral damage. At least in terms of potential resources we could have collected from you know components and steel and whatnot. Uh, mortars. I, I think it's worth it, though. Okay, so they're set up. 
Time for us to do a bit of setting up of our own. I wish we were a little bit more fortified down here. We seem to always get attacked from the south. Which, I mean, our bunker's here, so I guess it's better than some other places, but... Yeah. Edouard, I need you to start moving to, say... I don't know, get over there. Oh, you're not drafted. Okay. Get to here. That's probably a little bit closer to you. Meanwhile, everybody else is going to get called up and marched over here. And then I'll just pick people out of the group to go back to whatever they were doing. I'm going to let Petra continue cooking. That's a little bit more valuable to me right now than her as a fighter. Schultz, I don't know why you've accumulated so many weapons, but you should probably drop those somewhere. Um, Elijah, I will ask for your help. Amanda, yeah, let's bring everybody that can fight. Rianne, you keep working. Whale, yeah, we'll bring you. Um, you guys I didn't draft. So let's get you over there as well. And you're all fighters to some degree, so yeah, we'll use them. Oh, you have something. Who is that? Tetsuo? No, Karen. What does Karen have? She has our Spectre Code Red. Okay. Well, that's something to think about. But I think we're only going to need one of these, so we'll maybe save that one for the next raid. Or if, you know, Edouard gets dropped before he's able to use it. So we're going to run everybody over here, and we'll put people into battle stations there. Uh, I'll probably have some people set up on these sandbags as well. Um, and then maybe over here in case they decide to push wide. You never know what the enemy is going to do. They're kind of dumb, but sometimes that works their advantage because that makes them difficult to predict. Ideally, they'd, you know, attack straight on and hit us here, but they might decide that my animals are attempting target up there and go after them. Oh god, all the boars are sitting right here. I told them they could have this whole area. Like, let's look at this real quick. Zone, zone, zone. Um, expand allowed zone, livestock raid. They've got this whole sector here and they've decided to basically just all sit in the corner. Well, that's their choice. Okay, so I've taken the liberty of ordering some people around. The majority of our strike force team is out here, sort of serving as a, a the defensive tip of the spear. Um, it's weird using that phrase when you're on the defensive, but anyways, you get the idea. So the enemy is probably going to end up engaged with them first. Uh, everybody who is typically, you know, sort of a non-combatant, by that I mean, you know, dressed in civilian clothes, not wearing helmets or anything like that, they're going to set up in the bunker where hopefully they can provide some, you know, support as well. My security team people are taking up other positions outside, so Marin is over here on this side. She might need to move depending on the angle of engagement. So if they're up here, I think she's okay. But if not, then she might need to you know, move over. And then I've just got some people scattered kind of in this area to suppress the enemy if they do push that way just so that we have time to move people over. So yeah, that's what they're doing. Unfortunately, we lost Gomez to an insulting, insulting spree. So uh, she will not be helping us. Um, but... Anyway, Edouard is about in position, so he needs to get a little bit closer, but we're going to call it down like right in the middle of them. So he needs to move just a little bit more. Let's get him behind that tree, maybe. Tree's not great cover. Oh, no, they're already firing the mortar. Uh, please don't shoot at my dinos. Where's that going? Oh, God. Well, time for us to return fire. That's looking pretty good right there. God, where is this going? How is it still going? <laughs> uh, Jesus. Okay. Uh, pretty insignificant, actually. So, Ayala and... Uh, I guess just you. Get over there and put that out, please. Okay. Um... They are assaulting, but it looks like they're all dead. 
so that laser basically just determined that whole area was gonna die and then they all died. Yeah. Uh, are you gonna survive that? Possibly. Cass might actually make it. Although, <laughs> at this rate, maybe not. So that was quite effective. I'm curious now if I can get you to maybe take some of these people captive. So run over here, see if you can put a couple shots into them. Cast, are you even worth trying to heal? Uh, you're going to bleed out very quickly. Oh, apparently they're also... Are you suffocating from the explosions? Like, did they suck all the air out of the area, or is it because your neck got shredded? Could be both. Um... Slothful, fast walker, quick sleeper. Not a bad character, actually. We might try to save her. Um, Edward is not going to be able to do much for us there, though. Because he's going to be busy running them down. So I'm going to ask Marin. Actually, you know what? Tails is probably the fastest one. She's got to go a little bit farther, but... She is faster, so I think she'll make up some time. Go capture Cass, please, if you can. And you guys get back to work. Riker, I'm going to send you down there as well. Um, why did a boar die? Oh, plague? When did they get plague? Do you also have plague? No, you survived. Is it just those two? Uh, no, apparently a couple of them got plague. That's concerning. Uh, oh, you're just now getting there? Crap. Well, start with those conduits. She should get help. I'm going to undraft her so that she'll figure it out herself, but they should go over there and help her. Um, oh, you guys can go. You can go. Well, I'm very pleased to say that that worked extremely well. Did the other two get away? They must have. Okay. So, Edward, I'm actually going to have you do this then because you're already out here. I thought you were going to have to run down the other people, but it doesn't look like it. Let's see. We'll allow all of that, plus the silver. I'm going to let the drugs just deteriorate out here. And I will unforbid you so that you get uh, cremated, but otherwise I'll probably just leave all that alone. Okay, well, that is one siege dealt with quite effectively. And again, that was uh, what I thought was one of our lesser weapons. That's the reason I used it. Though, um, I've got to say, comparatively, that was pretty similar to the orbital beam targeter. In my experience I think the orbital beam targeter is roughly identical to that so that was more powerful again than I was expecting uh, Riker you can go back now the Odin device I have no idea what to expect but I do promise that we'll lose we'll use at least one of them before the end of this playthrough probably on an enemy base not like an outpost like this but like an actual enemy base on the map so like this for example we'll go just drop a tungsten rod on that settlement and see what happens or is this all bandit criminals too monster town scorpions rock I don't know we'll pick one and just blow it to hell and we also have the tornado generator so we can basically just spawn a tornado in the center of their base that is another fun possibility. Though that one, while potentially very destructive, could also be a complete flop. Because tornadoes obviously have very minimal control. So depending on you know where it starts and what direction it moves, it might do very little damage or it might destroy everything. Hard to predict with those. Anyways, I'm pleased that we were able to do that without you know risk to any of our own colonists. Edward, how far have you gone not very I think our friend Cass here is gonna die unfortunately being a prisoner there's not really a good way to do this 
Oh, there's another boar dead to the plague. I don't know that boars dying from plague make good eating, but we'll probably eat them anyways. You know what I'm wondering? Maybe to expedite this process, what I'll do is furniture, sleeping spot, boom, right there. Make that for a prisoner. Schult, you're going to be on standby right here. And Edward, you are going to capture Cass. And apparently, ignore me. So, damn it. I, I wish you could determine this better. Okay, so put Cass down. I don't know that she's going to make it. Oh, I didn't notice the brain damage. Clinical death. Okay, well, there's no point then. Right, never mind. Get rid of that. Sorry I wasted your time. As you were, Schult. Um, I wonder what killed her. Neck is... Okay, so efficiency zero on the neck. I just, I assumed because it was still technically intact um, that it was still having some function, but no. She uh, hadn't been getting any air for a while because her neck was too damaged. Well, that's a shame. She was a decent character, not the best by any means, but somebody that could have been useful around the base. Oh, well. Um, and then we're off to go recruit Josh, who I think is our only remaining prisoner that we intend to recruit. And Josh is another fighter. Somebody that we might try to train up as a bit of a crafter. But also somebody that we could just put to work cleaning, which we desperately need. Well, in the meantime, uh, it looks like we've made a little bit more progress over here. So I'm going to have them expand the roof area. Got to be a little bit careful because I don't want to risk a, a collapse. But that should be close enough to any one wall that we won't risk one. Uh, this is a little bit sketchy right here. I think we'll be okay. Because we've got this little bit there. Um, yeah, I think even at the most extreme points like this, we still have something nearby. So we'll ask them to expand that a little bit, and that will allow us to finally get some chandeliers in here. We desperately need this place to get clean. This is filthy. If you look at some of the uh, places that get traversed a lot, like right here, the mats are working. You can see all the dirt collecting here, and you know it's pretty sparse everywhere else, but we still need somebody to come along and clean this because it's only going to collect so much. Right here, it's really disgusting. Um, down here doesn't get traversed as much, but it's still pretty bad. So, got to figure out a solution for the cleaning. I think we just have too big an area and not enough people actually helping. Bruce was one of our cleaners, and he has been helping out with cooking lately, so we don't see him cleaning as much. I'm almost considering adding on one of our, like, Android mods or something. This is a little bit futuristic, this playthrough, uh, like near future. So maybe if we have a low-tech robot that cleans, um, we could get away with that. But that's all I can think of, because we basically just need somebody that cleans 24-7, and probably more than one somebody. We need somebody's doing it, like, all the time. Hauling would be useful too, but hauling isn't as much of a problem as cleaning currently is. Alright, so Gomez is no longer having her little mental break, and since she wandered into the stockpile area, I figured we'd go ahead and maybe get her refitted a little bit. I'm going to equip her as part of the away team, and she might be sort of like the last one that we pick to bring with us because she does have so many skills that are useful back here at base, but she is still somebody I'd like to bring along on occasion, especially when I need to bring a larger group. So I want to get her, again, equipped more like a soldier and less like a civilian. 
She is wearing some armor, but we're going to get her some better armor. Um, her backpack is fine. I will replace her gun, though, and we'll give this gun to uh, whoever else joins the security team. And I think we'll replace it with a sniper rifle. So either this Gull Magnum or this AR-10, which is more of a, a marksman rifle. But anyway, we'll get her something more along those lines. The range on that's 44. What's the range on this? 47. It's not that much of a difference. I think we'll go with this then. Uh, so anyways, while she's in here, let's have her grab one of the new body armors we've been producing, which is this one. That one looks to be new. So go ahead and equip that, please. And then I'll ask her to equip the AR-10. We'll have to figure out what headgear we want to give her. But that's a good start, and then I believe I have a spare uniform kicking around down here. Actually, two of them. So, after that, she can come wear this. And it looks like I actually do have a couple. Oh, I could have given her that. Oh, well. It's okay. She's already got one now. Uh, here she is. We have a lot of sniper rifles laying around, though, so I, I figured... In that group, it would probably be worthwhile to equip a few more people with longer range weapons. And since her shooting skill is so good, it made sense to give her, you know, one of those rifles. Okay, so she's got her gun. I'm going to forbid that just so it's easier for me to find in here. In fact, I should really do that with the, like, orbital weapons like this. Not because I don't want people picking them up, they won't pick them up regardless, but if there's a red X on something, it's a little bit easier to find. So, I think that makes sense. Of course, I've already lost, there they are, these guys. And I'm sure there's others, again, there's people carrying a couple with them too. But for now, that's all fine. She's going to go grab a uniform. Um, and the last thing I can think of is, again, headgear. So what are our options on that front? Um, why can I not remember where the thing is? Here we go. Okay. RN apparel bench. Uh, what about, like, a Rambo headband? Is that something that we can do? Just, like, a red headband type of thing? I'm not seeing one. I could give her the helmet that Tone is wearing. He's not supposed to have it. But I thought it looked a little bit weird with the uniforms. Or at least with the away team's uniforms. Not necessarily with the security teams. Uh, we could just give her a generic helmet. I don't know. If she's going to be a marksman, she doesn't really need one. She's going to be far enough away where they'll be hard-pressed to hit her. Could also give her a different beret to make her stand out. Uh, maybe a baseball cap with a mic on it. Backwards cap. Got bandanas. Uh, I don't know about bandanas. No, it doesn't look like we can do like a headband or anything. So... Maybe the backwards cap? Sure, let's do that. It's going to boost her social impact too, which is great because she already has really high social. It means when she's interacting with people for better prices, we might get an even better price thanks to that little boost. So what can I use here? Hmm... If I make it out of cloth, is it... I guess it doesn't matter. I'll make it out of cloth and I can always recolor it. It's just easier if it's the right color initially, but that's fine. So we'll make sure she gets that headgear done. And even that little hat is better than nothing because if it does happen that she gets shot in the head, every little bit counts. But again, with her weapon and her shooting skill at the distances she'll be engaging, I think she'll be fine for the most part. Major break risk. Uh, Allison. Oh, she's cremating people. I mean, you didn't have to. It's your own choice. Don't get upset because you chose to do something. 
All right, so I've got Tone in his beret. So I think that makes everybody on the security team checked off. Uh, we can decide whether or not we want to give Marin uh, a red beret as well, or if we are just going to leave her in the black one. Um, what else do we have going on? I know a few more of these got made, so I suppose we can look at them. I guess while everybody's sleeping, let's take a look at some of the artwork that got finished. So this is called Rogue by Amanda. And this piece bears a portrayal of a solitary singer near a campsite. The image somehow expresses both exhaustion and misery. Okay, it's a bit simple, but that's okay. Um, we will have that one installed in, oh, I'm gonna pause. Let's see, what's the quality on this? It was just normal. And every room in here has one, right? Every single room, except for that one, but we've already got something moving there. Okay, so in that case, let's start working on this. Since she made it, I guess she can have that one. Who made us the hat? Karen did. Karen, drop the hat right there, please. Off you go. And so I don't forget, I'm going to ask Gomez to grab that right now. Because otherwise I will forget. Um, and I'll forbid that there for the time being. Okay, um, and she probably doesn't need two different kinds of incendiaries, so I might have her drop the Molotovs. But she is now outfitted like one of our soldiers and will probably be joining them on the next mission. Uh, is anybody gonna repair that? And it kills me that that thing is like so beat up. But I think it's still the same output regardless. I'm pretty sure it's still outputting it full, so I don't know that it matters as long as it's not destroyed. But somebody could come along and like cough on it and that would be enough damage to to break it for good. So we probably do want to fix it at some point. Come on, Gomez. Waiting on you. Okay. So there's her cool backwards cap that's uh, covering her eyes, unfortunately. Let's wait until she gets out of the here so we can actually see, but at least up here it looks like it's covering her eyes. Yeah, it totally is. Uh, that's a bit of a bummer. What I can do is go into the artwork for this mod and just move it up a little bit so that it's not doing that. Uh, I notice headgear in general people seem to have a hard time with in mods. It, very often either sits way too high on the head or way too low. But this is an easy fix, especially since it appears to only be off on that one side, just facing forward. When she moves to the right, looks okay. It's not too bad. And when she moves up, it looks perfect. So should be an easy fix. Just have to literally go in there and move the artwork up slightly. And then save it and hope that an update doesn't overwrite it. All right, well, with uh, the sun slowly rising, I think now is going to be a good place to end the episode, and we will come back next time ready for our bandit camp quest. Luckily, we were able to deal with that siege without any bloodshed on our part, so everybody's ready to go. Uh, and with Gomez now equipped, we can send her as part of the team. I think we are going to need her as well as the usual Riker, um... Marin, what did you do? Hang on a minute. She just ditched her uniform. That's not okay. Where did she put her vest down? What the hell? It just like vanished. There it is. Go put that back on. I guess we'll have to leave it as force wear. Um, I'll have to check the clothing assignments because she shouldn't be able to do that, but apparently, apparently she can. So I'll need to make sure that that is uh, not possible anymore. Anyway, we'll probably need to send Riker. Uh, I should probably get Allison kitted out too. Yeah, I think we'll kit out Allison like a soldier. But Riker, possibly Allison, Gomez, uh, Bruce, Boss, Lester, and maybe borrow a few others like Tone because we are going up against 12 bandits and they will have guns, so we are going to need some at least considerable firepower. Also, I'm just noticing now that 
that wire was unnecessarily overstretched that one too and hopefully by then we'll have made a bit more progress over here as well but it is coming along fairly nicely it's just going to be absolutely disgustingly filthy in there when it is done well it's disgusting in there now it's just uh technically it's still outdoors but we're you know obviously trying to fix that so thank you guys so much for watching i had a great time playing some rim world with you and i look forward to seeing you guys back here for the next episode